Hi, I'm Seth Freudberg. I'm the Director of Options Training here at SMBU in Manhattan. I'm also the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk. Uh, so today I'd like to do a video on the dumbest thing you can do as an options trader, as a beginning options trader uh, specifically. And uh, I should know because I did this myself 10 years ago. So I want to um, uh, basically warn those of you who are just getting started trading options about you know, a serious mistake that you can make. I really hope that you avoid this one. So um, first off, you know, what's the process you need to go through to uh, become a successful options trader? The first thing you have to do is get an education. Um, options trading has some nuances to it. They're, it's a little tricky. Ultimately, it's easy to understand, but it takes a little time to get over the learning curve. So you've got to get a solid uh, foundation in options trading somewhere, somehow, uh, get yourself grounded in the major option strategies, the, w the Greeks and the way uh, options work uh, in general. It's really important and if you don't start with that, you, you really don't have a shot at being successful. Um, once you've gotten the education, now you see the different strategies that you can employ. And so uh, a good idea is to go through and back test a number of the strategies. Uh, pick the ones that you, you find the most interesting, the most attractive, and back test them for a while and do it in a disciplined way. Uh, I would say three to five years would be a minimum for each strategy. Once you, you back test, then uh, you should take several months to paper trade. Most uh, online brokers have a paper trading account you can get. They'll give you a million dollars of fake money uh, and you can trade that and watch uh, the, you know, the dynamics of options. It's not a perfect experience at all. It's nothing emotionally like live trading, but at least it gives you, you some practice on uh, learning your broker platform and also some ideas of the way the market flows and, and options pricing flows and so forth. Uh, it's helpful, uh, but nowhere nearly as helpful as actually live trading. So that's where the danger comes in because in order to learn how to trade, you've got to trade. You've got to trade live capital. Otherwise, you'll never understand uh, the experience of slippage, of emotion, of practical issues in terms of uh, how your broker market, um, uh, your broker platform uh, works, uh, practical issues like what do I do if I'm away from my screen uh, for an hour and I've got live positions on and lots of little things you don't worry about in a back test or paper trading, but you worry about a lot when real capital is, uh, is up on the table. If you do decide to trade uh, live, um, and if, you know, it, and I say if, because if your back tests aren't working, trust me, your trading is really not going to work. So if you, if you don't have your strategies clarified, if you haven't developed a, a clear game plan for how you're going to trade, uh, and you've back tested certain strategies and they're not working, they're not going to work live either. In fact, they'll most likely get worse because uh, of emotion. So um, once you have uh, decided to trade and you think you have some uh, strategies that are useful and you've, and you've reached those conclusions through backtesting and paper trading, uh, then, and this is the key to this whole video, at that point, uh, fund an account that has the absolute minimum that you are allowed to fund an options account with your broker and the absolute minimum you would need to do uh, this different strategies that you'll be trading live. In other words, trade the smallest possible amount that you can trade uh, without making it ridiculous and giving yourself no flexibility at all. So um, that should be a very, very small number and it should be a very, very small percentage of your personal net worth. And then I would recommend at that point you trade multiple strategies because you may think you know the strategy you're in love with, but unless you've traded it live, uh, you don't really know how you will react in different market conditions with that strategy. When you have capital actually at risk, you behave differently than if you don't. It's just human nature. And so until you start trading live and until you experience multiple strategies, you're not going to know uh, exactly what kind of a trader you are. And therefore, you should trade very, very small in the beginning. That becomes, to, every time you lose on a trade, that's further tuition um, and you want to minimize your tuition costs, basically. Now, here's a critical point I would like to share with you. And this is, in fact, the dumbest thing you can do as an options trader. 
Once you've experienced a limited amount of success, there is a tendency to start getting cocky and feel like you can uh, um, conquer the world. Hey, I had $10,000 of capital. I made a uh, $1,000 on that. That's a 10% return. If I had had a million dollars, then I would have made $100,000. Uh, let me, I'm here to tell you that's just not true. You're going to trade extremely differently if you have a million dollars of capital up than you will if you have $10,000 of capital up. Uh, the dollars get bigger. When you get drawn down, you're drawn down much larger amounts of dollars, even though the percentages are the same or even smaller. When you're up money, you're up much larger amounts of money. Therefore, you tend to uh, pull the trades off too early. Uh, on when you have a, a loss, uh, you will react um, way too strongly to being drawn down because the amounts of uh, dollars involved uh, that you're drawing down are much larger than you're used to and so you will normally panic. And if you panic, uh, then you will pull the trades off too quickly. If you pull the trades off too quickly, you've locked in losses and you start to have a confidence crisis because uh, what used to work for you on a small level of capital, uh, now if you've increased your capital too quickly, uh, and then you will have a, a, a much larger drawdown in your account and you'll start to wonder, does trading make sense at all? Uh, and believe me, that can happen when you've lost a reasonable amount of money, much more than you thought you'd lose uh, because you've ramped up your capital too quickly. So you need to increase your capital level slowly. Uh, you're not going to know how you're going to react to larger losses unless you gradually increase your capital level uh, to the point where uh, you see yourself getting really affected emotionally. At that point, you're probably trading at your, your limit and you need to stay at that level for a while until you get used to that level of capital, that level of drawdown, that level of wins as well. So I can hear you now. You're saying, wait a second, you're telling me that I'm supposed to stay at a very, very small capital level for a long time. How am I supposed to do that uh, if I need to uh, you know, uh, trade larger in order to uh, pay my bills and meet my income goals? And, and it's true. Uh, you, uh, you will not be able to meet your bills, pay your bills, and you will not be able to meet your income goals for some time. Uh, most traders do not become any good for a year or two. Uh, some traders never get good, by the way. Others are, uh, are prodigious or prodigies, uh, and they can get really good in six months. Those are outliers. Those are extremely unusual people. Those are probably uh, in the top 5% of traders. The likelihood is you're not in the top 5% of traders. Uh, you might be in the top 10%, but uh, it will probably take you one to two years to get good. So you can't start trading in your first couple years at a capital level that you'll need to make a living when you don't know how to trade yet. And the great likelihood is you don't really know how to trade within the first year or two. So uh, if you do, though, make the mistake of trading at too large of a capital level before you uh, are ready to, you go into what I call the downward spiral. And how does the downward spiral work? You trade at a capital level uh, way too large, way too early in your trading career. You panic when the trade goes against you. You lock in a large loss uh, and you keep doing this month after month until your account shrinks. At that point, then, you do not have enough money in your account uh, to ever get to a, uh, a capital level that will allow you to earn uh, a proper return and be able to pay your bills and meet your income goals and exceed your goals, uh, you'll never get there because you will have damaged your capital base so much uh, that you, uh, you will have to get a ridiculously unrealistic return to meet your income levels and those returns are normally not attainable. And so therefore, what you've done is basically destroyed your trading career by damaging your capital level so badly that you never gave yourself the opportunity to know whether you actually could become a competent and successful trader. So 
a tragedy has occurred because you acted very foolishly. And that tragedy is you traded too large early, you lost a lot of money, you damaged your confidence, and you started to even doubt if trading for a living was for you. And so you could have been a successful trader had you not made this one fatal mistake of ramping your capital level up too much, but now you'll never find out because you've lost too much money. So there is a lot of truth in the concept that the market is extracting a tuition from you when, you're first, uh, when you first start trading. That's exactly what's happening. The market is sitting there loving, naive, uh, you know, bumpkins who are just getting started trading and, uh, and they will gladly take your money. Trust me, they will gladly take your money. And so uh, they're going to take it anyway because when you start trading, uh, you're going to lose money most likely until you start to get the hang of it. So why not lose a little bit of money instead of losing a lot of money? Why give a large tuition to the market when you have the option, the very easy option, to give a small amount of money to the market? So if you accept that it is going to take you a year or two to get to a level where you can even think about meeting your income goals through options trading, if you just accept that fact and don't try to get ahead of the process, you're giving yourself a real chance to become a successful trader. If on the other hand you act foolishly, you ramp up your capital level too large, uh, it can really hurt. And then the, the worst thing of all, you may quit and never find out whether you would have been a successful options trader. And in many cases, some potentially very terrific traders never knew how good they could be because they ran out of capital. So please think about this. Please don't trade too large uh, initially. And uh, if you do that and you're patient and you're careful and you're mature, you'll give yourself a chance to see whether you could be a successful options trader. My observation has been the people who trade uh, carefully, uh, who take their notes, uh, who uh, ask uh, mentors and other experienced traders how they do what they're doing, for those people who are careful uh, and consistent and they don't try to get a hold of the, ahead of the process and they work hard and they have intellectual curiosity and they're reasonably intelligent, they have a really good chance of becoming successful traders. But if you try to get ahead of the process, if you're immature, if you're cocky like I was, uh, it, uh, it can be really dangerous. So please take this seriously. Don't trade too large in the beginning. Give yourself a chance to become a successful trader. Thanks very much and we'll see you next week.